posterior dislocation of the sternoclavicular joint. Here is the clavicle and the sternum and the sternoclavicular joint. The sternoclavicular joint is supported by strong ligaments. Dislocation of the sternoclavicular joint can occur due to injury to these strong ligaments. The dislocation can be anterior dislocation, means the clavicle moves to the front or anteriorly, which is common. It's a benign one and it doesn't cause any problem in the majority of patients. And posterior dislocation, which is dangerous. Look at all these dangerous structures behind the medial end of the clavicle. You find the right subclavian vein, you find the trachea, the esophagus, you find some arteries. So a posterior dislocation of the clavicle can affect the trachea, the esophagus, the veins and the arteries. If you suspect posterior dislocation of the sternoclavicular joint because of pain or a swelling in this area, then CT scan is the best study for assessment of this joint and for establishing the diagnosis and for assessment of any associated injuries. In this case, the CT scan showed posterior dislocation of the clavicle in a patient who sustained a shoulder injury three days before obtaining the CT, and that injury was occult, not seen on the routine x-rays of the chest. The patient was evaluated because of the swelling of the upper extremity. Doppler showed DVT of the left upper extremity and CT scan with contrast was ordered. Unexpectedly, the CT scan showed the clavicle to be posteriorly dislocated, compressing the vein and causing DVT. Look at the position of the clavicle. See how posterior the clavicle is. That can be dangerous. Treatment. Close reduction with the backup of a cardiac surgeon is the usual treatment. However, you may need to do open reduction in some cases with repair of the ligaments. And here is illustration of open reduction. Once you reduce the joint, the joint is usually stable. Posterior dislocation can be a difficult diagnosis and it could be associated with more serious, dangerous problems such as dyspnea, dysphagia, tachypnea, and compression of the great vessels. Sometimes it may be associated with DVT of the upper extremity as seen in our patient. The good news is posterior dislocation is not common. On the other hand, the anterior dislocation is common, it's obvious, it's benign, and it doesn't affect the function. If you try to do closed reduction or anterior dislocation, you'll not be able to maintain that reduction. On the other hand, posterior dislocation will be stable after reduction. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.